and welcome to part 6 of our S3 service. So in this video we are going to see the storage classes and what all different types of storage classes are provided by the S3 service and we'll also do some hands on on it. So let's start. So now let's take some introduction of our S3 storage classes which are provided by our S3 service. So first of all first we have Amazon S3 standard general purpose. Then we have Amazon S3 standard infrequent access. It can be also referred as standard IA. Then we have Amazon S3 one zone infrequent access. Then we have Amazon S3 glacier instant retrieval. Then we have Amazon S3 glacier flexible retrieval. Then we have Amazon S3 glacier deep archiving. So we have three flavors of the glacier storage classes. And lastly, we have Amazon S3 intelligent tiering. So these are all the storage classes which are provided our S3 service. And we are going to learn each and every storage class in a very detailed manner. So before deep diving into our types of storage classes, first of all, let's clear some concepts of durability and availability. So durability is referred as how many objects can be lost by the S3 service. So let's take an example that we have 10 million objects uploaded into our bucket. So we can assume that one object can be lost every 10,000 years. So this uh, service is highly durable and the percentage is 99.99% durable. So durability remains same for all the storage classes. So all the storage classes are highly durable. So next term is availability. So it is referred as how readily a service is and it varies in different storage classes. So all the different storage classes have different availability. Let's take an example that we have S3 standard storage class and its availability is 99.99%. So it can be said that it is down for only 53 minutes every year. So that's very good and the ratio in percentage is 99.99%. So now let's move to all the storage classes and deep dive into all of them so let's go so now let's start with our very first storage class which is sc standard general purpose so this is the basic storage class and it is 99.99 percent available as i told it is down for only 53 minutes every year next it is used for frequently accessed data so if your data is going to be frequently accessed then you can use the standard general purpose storage class it has low latency and the throughput is very high then last it can bear two simultaneous facility failure so these are all the main important points of our standard general purpose storage class so now let's move to the second storage class so next storage class is infrequent access so if we have the data which we know that it is not going to be frequently accessed but when it is needed to be accessed, the access should be very rapidly. Then we can use the storage class. We have two different types of infrequent access. First is S3 standard infrequent access. And second is S3 one zone infrequent access. So in standard infrequent access, the availability is 99.99%. And the use case of it is disaster recovery and backups so if we want to do the backups or if we want to save our data from the disaster we can use the storage class which is s3 standard infrequent access then next we have s3 one zone infrequent access here the availability is less compared to the standard one but the durability is 99.99% in a single availability zone. If the availability zone is destroyed, then the data would be lost. So the use case of this storage class is that we can use it to store secondary backup copies of on-premises data. So we have two types of infrequent access and we have seen uh, them in a very detailed manner. Now let's move to the third storage class. So let's start with the S3 Glacier storage class. Let's take some introduction that what is it and why it is used. So first of all, it is a low cost object storage. It is meant for archiving and backuping the data. So if you want to archive or backup your objects, then you can use this Glacier storage classes. You need to pay price for storage as well as the object retrieval cost. So here you need to pay for two things, the storage 
of your objects which you have stored and then if you retrieve your data then the retrieval cost will also be given to you you have to pay for storage and the retrieval cost then we have three flavors in the gla glacier storage classes first is the glacier instant retrieval second is the glacier flexible retrieval and last is the glacier deep archiving so let's start with the first retrieval which is glacier instant retrieval so it is a minimal second retrieval and it is great for the data which is quarterly access and the minimal storage duration is for 90 days the next storage class is S3 Glacier Flexible Retrieval. Here we have three different types of flexibility available. First is the expedited flexibility. In this flexibility, we will get our data back within 5 to 10 minutes. And second is the standard one. In here, we will get our data back within 3 to 5 hours. And last, we have bulk flexibility, which is a free flexibility. So here the data will be back in 5 to 12 hours and the minimum storage duration is for 90 days so here in the glacier flexibility retrieval we have the flexibilities and in a certain duration of time you will get your data back and in instant retrieval we will get our data in a instant manner so this is the difference between the instance and the flexible uh, retrieval and the last one then Glacier is S3 Glacier Deep Archiving. It is also referred as long term storage. So here we have two tires. First is standard and second is bulk. In standard we can store our data for 10 hours and in bulk we can store our data for 40 to 48 hours. It is low cost because it is long, long term storage and the minimal duration of time here is 180 days. So these are all the three different flavors of glacier storage class. First is the instant retrieval, second is the flexible retrieval and last is the deep archiving one. So now let's move on to the other storage class. So now let's talk about the last storage class which is S3 intelligent tiering. So here we need to pay small monthly auto tiering and monitoring fee. Here our objects can move. Uh, between different access tiers automatically based upon their usage. There are no object retrieval charges in the intelligent tiering storage class. We have five different access tiers. The first is frequent access tier which is a by default tier. Then we have infrequent access tier. Here we can configure for the objects which are not accessed for 30 days. Then we have archive instant access tier. So we can configure it for the objects which are not accessed for 90 days. Then we have archive access tier. So we can configure this tier for the objects which are not accessed from 90 days to 700 plus days. And last we have deep archive access tier. So we can configure this tier for objects which are not accessed for 180 days to 700 plus days. So here we have difference between all the storage classes. I have listed all the difference of uh, the storage classes which are there. Go through this and you will be able to deep dive into all the storage class in a very detailed manner. You will be able to know that what is the difference between all the storage class and why it is actually used. So now let's move on to the hands-on project and let's go to our AWS console and see what all uh, storage classes are available in our AWS console in our S3 service. So let's go. So now let's see the demo of our storage classes and let's move our object from one storage class to another storage class manually and automatically. So for, for that, first of all, we need to create a bucket. So let's create it and name it S3 Properties Storage classes right then the region would be us east only right and other all configurations we are going to take it by default as we just want demo of the storage classes let's create the bucket and let's upload some object in our bucket let's open our bucket into a new tab let's wait okay let's open it into a new tab First of all, then we have to upload some objects into our bucket. So click on upload and add some files. I'll add the image of the channel. Okay, so once you have uh, uploaded the file into the queue, then you have to go to the properties part and here you will be able to see the storage classes. 
here we are able to see all the storage classes which we have learned in the previous video right so we have many storage classes present here even they have given us that for what purpose the storage class is designed for so if you uh, forget that for what object do you need which storage class you can uh, refer that from here and you can choose the storage class accordingly not only they have given a design for they have also given different panels also like uh, availability zones minimum storage duration and everything that they have given you can go through it so here the storage classes are first is the standard one which is the default one second we have intelligent hearing third we have standard ia fourth we have one zone ia then we have all the glacier storage classes which is the instant retrieval flexible retrieval and deep archive and last is the reduced redundancy storage class right so all the storage class which we have learned are present here so here we are going to do standard ia which is standard infrequent access so now let's select that and save and upload our object so let's wait okay so our object is uploaded successfully now let's close it so let's view our storage class so first of all let's go to our object and scroll down and there we will be able to see the storage class part here we are able to see that the storage class at the current point is standard infrequent access right so if you want to change this storage class we can also manually change it so click on edit button and let's change our uh, storage class from ia to intelligent hearing so click on intelligent hearing here and click on save changes so at this point the storage class is standard ia now let's save the changes and the storage class will be different will be edited so let's close it and again scroll down to the storage class part and here we are able to see that our storage class is changed to intelligent turing so this is how you can change your class uh, storage class manually but if you want to change your storage class automatically in the uh, proper amount of time then you can create a life cycle rule for it so first of all let's go to the object and go to the management part here in the management part you will be able to see the life cycle rules let's create one click on create life cycle rule and give demo life cycle rule name right okay so in rule scope we are going to choose apply to all the objects in the bucket and let's acknowledge it so here we are able to see the life cycle life cycle rule actions there are many use cases present here so first is move current versions of objects between storage classes so we want to do that so we'll click on the checkbox down we have the transition actions we have to create here the transition rules so for initial 30 days after initial 30 days the storage class will be changed to standard ia then we can also add the transition after let's say 70 days the storage class of the object will be changed to the intelligent turing storage class we can also add one more for the glacier instant retrieval we can say after 200 days the uh, storage class will be changed to the glacier instant retrieval storage class so this is how you can add the transitions and you can change your storage class of objects from one to another so down here we are we are able to see the review transition and expiration actions from the day 0 to day 200 which we have specified here so at day 0 to day 30 the objects will be uploaded and after day 30 the storage class will move to standard ai after 70 days the storage class will move to intelligent hearing and lastly after 200 days the storage class will move to glacial instant retrieval so this is how you can create the life cycle rule and you can move your objects uh, storage class from one to another automatically you can do it both way manually and automatically but of course automatically is more better than manual so that's it for the video meeting you in the next video